Bazooka Spitting Aircraft of World War II Charlie Carpenter's bazooka-equipped aircraft struck fear in the hearts of the German army. It was in 1944. A German tank division slowly sneaked and encircled the U.S. 4th Armored Division headquarters. The Germans were confident of their victory, but then they heard a strange noise from above. The Germans by now knew the noise. It's the noise of bazookas being fired from a lightweight aircraft. The bazookas took some hits and destroyed few lead tanks, which halted the advance and brought some time for the 4th Armored Division to retreat. Charlie Carpenter flew the bazooka's spitting aircraft. His colleagues call him the Mad Major. World War II Service After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the USA entered World War II on the Allied side. With the mighty US war machine's help, Allied forces liberated North Africa and landed in Italy and the Russians began pushing the Germans back. There was a constant push from Joseph Stalin to open up a new front from the north of France. After much reluctance from Winston Churchill, the D-Daily landing occurred in June 1944. With it, the combined Allied forces entered Europe. Charlie Carpenter was born in Illinois in 1912. He started his career as a history teacher and then enlisted in the U.S. Army Air Force when America entered the war. Carpenter's specialty was to fly reconnaissance flights to locate targets for artillery attacks. After training, he saw action in the European war theater. He piloted a grasshopper lightweight aircraft with no guns and a heavy radio set. Charlie was not so happy with his passive role. Fortunately, for the Mad Major his life became an active one. Action in World War II Charlie and his team were flying over a French village by foot for potential artillery targets. They noticed German soldiers in the village with no armored vehicle support. A U.S. tank division was at the village entrance but hesitated to attack as they thought it was a plot for an ambush. Charlie requested an assault against the Germans, but the U.S. tank commander denied his request. Charlie climbed onto one of the U.S. Sherman tank and started firing at the Germans. The panicked soldiers fled the town. For his actions, Charlie was about to be punished, but legendary tank commander General George S. Blood and guts pattern saved him. The heavy German Panther and Tiger tanks had heavy armor, which was impenetrable by U.S. tank shells. The Achilles heel of German tanks was their thin rear or turret armor. If a rocket or shell could hit the rear or turret armor it could penetrate and damage the tank. Knowing this, Charlie added bazookas, rocket launchers to his grasshopper plane and took a deep dive on the German tanks just like a German Stuka dive bomber. At approximately 100 meters in distance Charlie will launch his rockets at the tank and pull up immediately. His method was so effective that the German tank crews became afraid of reconnaissance planes. Carpenter gradually increased his bazooka capacity to six and attacked tanks and armored vehicles. The Germans attacked the incoming grasshopper, but their fire revealed their positions to allied artillery crews. Charlie would load up, attack an enemy column, fly back to base, load up and attack again. In an interview with a U.S. newspaper, he quoted the best way to attack an enemy is attack, attack, attack and again attack. Charlie's fellow pilots, too, took up his idea and fitted their planes with bazookas. Charlie would sometimes land on the battlefield and capture German soldiers. Charlie was given an honorary discharge from the U.S. Army Air Force citing poor health. Carpenter received credit for destroying six German tanks and several other armored vehicles. Charlie's grasshopper was located in Austria and is restored. People like Charlie teach us that creative thinking can solve many problems.